One more thing worth having a look at is what happens in small open economies. So what we're going to look at is in a small open economy, how is the real interest rate determined and how are national savings, investment and net capital flows determined. Just to recap, we've seen previously when we just looked at a closed economy that savings, investment and the real interest rate were determined like this. We have savings as an increasing function of the real interest rate, investment as a decreasing function, and where they reached equilibrium, that's where we got the real interest rate. So this is just a bit of a refresher and we'll see how this differs in small open economies. But first, of course, we have to define the term. What is a small open economy? Quite simply, it's defined by the first two words in it. A small open economy is open to international trade and it is small enough that it doesn't exert enough influence to make any noticeable difference to global prices and interest rates. So to see what I mean, in a small open economy, the members of that economy will just use some globally set real interest rate available in the global market. Now, why will they all use this? If lenders ask for a higher rate than what is globally available, then all the borrowers in this small open economy can just say, not interested in borrowing at that higher rate, we're going to go to the global market where it's cheaper. And at the same time, if borrowers insist on a lower rate, then the lenders will just say, never mind, we're not lending to you, we'll lend in the global market 